Hello and welcome to another very important uh, interview. In today's one, we're going to be interviewing Megan Hollingshead, the person who you might know who voiced Monster Hunter. Welcome, adventure seekers. Sydney. It's unbelievable. Myra. Ha! And I win. And Chrysalis. But there isn't really much talking with that character. Um, but yeah. Yeah, hi, I'm Megan. Uh, you will you might know me as the voice of Nurse Joy in Pokemon. Um, uh, my Valentine in Yu-Gi-Oh! And what else? A lot of uh, fun characters that I have been privileged to play over the years. And I am happy to be here today or this evening or whenever you're watching. And um, so the first question is, uh, did you watch the previous versions of the Turtles? Did I watch previous versions of Turtles? Yes. I did not. I did not. I knew nothing about turtles when I came in, except that I was lucky to be in a room with uh, with a lot of my friends. And it was actually the first um, my first experience with original animation where I got to uh, I got to do the original version of the script instead of dubbing where the cartoons already existed in a different language and I had to match the cartoons. I just got to act. I just got to, I mean, I get to act with dubbing too, but like, I just got to be as free as I wanted to be. And, uh, and then the cartoon was, the art was done to match my flap instead of me matching someone else's flap. And for anyone who doesn't know, flap is the character's mouth moving up and down. And, and how did you find out about uh, the role? In, in Turtles? Uh, yes. In Turtles, I was lucky enough to um, to be working at that studio already. So uh, uh, I was working on Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and, and whatever else they were happened to be producing at the time. So um, I had been hoping to work on Turtles um, and I I'd, I'd asked, you know, hey, guys, if you need anything. I would love to do it. So finally they came up with a role that I could do. And what was the auditioning process like? I didn't have to audition for that. They knew me well enough that they knew um, I could jump in. Um, probably, this was a long time ago, but you know they would pay us by the hour. And so if I was already working on another show, they could throw me into um, something else that was going on, you know, as I'm saying that, that might not have been true for turtles. They might've had something else going on, but, but like I said, I was around, they tried to, they, they tried to use people who were already working for them at the studio. And so I was lucky enough just to get thrown in without auditioning at, at that moment. They were like, can you do an Australian accent? Which for an American is really hard. We, um, we, we often mix it up with uh, proper English accent or Cockney accent. Like, so my Australian started off kind of Australian, ended up a little bit Cockney and probably with all my accents, I ended up Russian. So I wouldn't be surprised if she sounded a little Russian, <laughs> but that was one I would have prepared for if they had told me in advance, but nope. They're like, get in there. Hey, do you do Australian? Uh, okay, sure. I'll try. <laughs> and was it hard to get into the character say it again and was it hard to get into the characters that one not the character like i said the accent was challenging but the character were that character monster hunter was easy she was big and fun and loud and crazy and um and it was very clear what her motive was um when i play a character that has a clear view of the world and a clear motive, you know, a clear view of the world and clear object. What do they want? Then it's exceptionally easy to um, connect and find life for that character. And have you used any um, or the same voices in any of your projects? Different voices? Um, that's something I'll work out with the director. Um, either, either in the audition or if there's an audition or on the spot and, and often both. 
um, they'll like in an audition, it'll say um, the age of the character and whether they want like a high sweet voice or a, a high bratty voice or a, a low sultry voice or a low voice that is not sultry at all. Um, so I'll get that direction in the audition and then refine it with a director. Um, like, uh, that sounds like the last character you did. Can you do something a little different or can you, um, can you make it less nasal, more nasal, sweeter, not as sweet, um, more funny, less funny, all sorts of, all sorts of tricks like that. And um, can you still do the voices? Most of them, yeah. Uh, someone asked me to do, um, what was it? Fate Stay Night, uh, caster from Fate Stay Night recently. And I blanked. I still would blank. I'd have to go watch her again. Um, I can do Nurse Joy at the drop of a hat. Also because I'm continuing to do her, I've had to remember her. Uh, and I can always do my Valentine. Uh, and I can even do, I can even do Monster Hunter from Ninja Turtles. She's just loud. And maybe she turns Russian, I can't remember. But, um, but then other times I just forget and have to watch them again. I had, um, I'm on Cameo where people can, it's, it's uh, odd and lovely. People can pay to have me record a message for them. And so someone asked for, um, uh, am I Annie or Oakley? Annie from one of the Pokemon movies. And I had to go back and watch that because I couldn't remember exactly what she sounded like. I had an idea, but it came out funny. And so I watched that again, which was a total joy because I'd forgotten that I did it with Lisa Ortiz, who's one of my favorite people on the planet. And uh, so that was pretty cool. And like, I probably couldn't do that now. Um, even though I just did it, it was something like that. Very, she was very mysterious, almost like a spy. I guess I can do it. Um, but again, I had to be reminded. So I do have to be reminded of, of characters from time to time. And, and, who's your favorite, and, and who's your favorite person to work with? Oh, I have so many. I have so many. Um, I, I often don't get to work directly with the actors, but I'll hear their performances if they've gone before me and it's super inspiring. Um, and I have to say, you know, my besties, Lisa Ortiz and Tara Sands and uh, Veronica Taylor, um, they've been friends of mine from way back in the day. And then the directors, um, I, I love working with uh, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn because she makes me work hard. She makes me uh, not fall upon just the character, but really connect with what I know about the experience the character is going through. She um, is great at extracting a very real performance. Um, and I love that. And then the fun I have, you know, with, uh, with directors I've become friends with who are very fun and that makes it an easy working environment. So um, yeah. And Lisa Ortiz is now directing. So uh, when she's directing, I'm, uh, it's hard for me to not just want to like catch up and talk and talk and talk, but that energy comes through in the characters. You know, when, when I'm alive and awake and energized, no matter what character I'm doing, that goes through. And when I'm having to caffeinate and eat candy and stand on my tiptoes to get there, it's it probably works, but it's uh, it's more challenging for everybody. And and did you audition for any other roles? Uh, in one particular show or in anything? Um, on turtles. On turtles, I don't remember. I actually think I did audition at one point for April. I think we were all given a chance to audition for that, but obviously I did not get that. And, and do you prefer to do tra traditional voice and, and voiceover work or, or dubbing? Um, 
I love dubbing because it's the extra challenge. Um, it's like patting your head and rubbing your belly at the same time. You know, it's acting and matching at the same time. It's very technical and very creative. And um, you're trying to give an authentic performance, but also depending on the producer, some producers want a more authentic uh, recreation of what was done in Japanese. Some producers want, some producers don't care, but either way, there's some sense of matching what's been done in the past and recreating um, your own character. So I love dubbing. Um, the freedom of doing original animation, which I have less experience with, honestly, is so cool. It's so exciting. Um, so there's a place in my heart for both. I don't, uh, I don't have a choice. Although to get down to brass tacks, um, doing original animation offers the opportunity for uh, residuals, which would be money an actor would get paid every time the show airs again. And so that's appealing because this is a job. Like as Woody Allen once said, it's called show business, not show show. <laughs> and do you prefer to do movies or TV shows? Um, either, either. It's, uh, it was fun working on all the Pokemon movies um, just to be a part of the excitement once it airs, you know, once it comes out on the ones that came out in the theater was so, um, so exciting just to like do something different and be in the theater. Like what, who saw that coming? But the work itself was uh, mostly pretty similar except there was a bigger arc. Um, yeah, either, and, either either. And, 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 and what's your favorite project to work on? Oh man, don't make me pick. Uh, I, I've loved them all, but uh, Bleach, I think might've been my favorite. Um, I could barely keep up with what was going on while I was recording it. I came in late, uh, like the third season, I think. And I was like, the what, the who now? Who are these people? What's the spirit realm? Who, I don't understand. And, uh, and then just how cool the whole vibe of the show was. I was like, wow, this is cool and silly. I got to be very, very serious and very, very silly, which is the best of all possible worlds. And I got to work with a bunch of different directors who were super fun. So everything about that was a great experience. And I'm still catching up on that show. I'm still like, I'm just watching it all the way through, seeing the scenes I wasn't in and I'm putting it all together. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's what was going on. And, and do you watch um, the things in Ravine in, in, after they come out? Uh, some, but not all. Some, but not all. I was, I was one of those actors who was not a fan first. I was a um, sci-fi adventure geek. And uh, so I came late to anime and I still, uh, yeah, I like it. I like some shows. So I haven't watched everything. And because, you, and because you're like a big part in, in the Pokemon community, um, and when did you realize that it, was, that it was such a big thing? Uh, when, when Pokemon the first movie came out, um, we were all laughing that they were calling it Pokemon the first movie as if there would be a second. Um, but this was, you know, this was before the internet was a big thing. And there was no way to know how excited people were getting. And when the movie came out and people were buzzing about it and uh, one of my cousin's kids wanted my autograph and I was like, oh, oh, this is a thing, people like it. And around that time I got invited to my very first convention and I was like, really? This is this is big enough that people want to have a convention about it. And then I went and people were so excited. And uh, so that's, that's around when it hit. And um, the fact that it's still so big today and the fact that it's touched so many people's lives in a 
in a deeper way than just watching a cartoon, you know, it's, um, I don't know if there is such thing as just watching a cartoon now that I said that. Uh, what a privilege that I didn't even know I was getting at the time. I knew I was having fun, but I didn't know that I would be part of a bigger thing. And did you ever think, and did you ever think you'd be in like still going today? No, no, uh, I, uh, no, not at all. Yeah, we could not have seen that coming. Um, and do you have a favorite, um, and do you have a favorite turtle? I don't, I love them all. Yeah. Um, one final thing, um, would it be okay if you did um, um, and said one phrase um, from, um, um, from turtles? One what? Um, if, and you said what? If you said one phrase from turtles. One phrase? Yeah. Um, well, the let's see. The only phrase I said over and over was Parker, get them now. Stop those turtles. See? Perfect. Australian all together, but thank you. <laughs> Perfect. That's really my childhood. Aw, that's so cool. You know what? I think uh, I think my belated New Year's resolution is to work on an Australian accent. <laughs> One day I'll get it. Well, well, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure, Lewis. This is super fun. Yeah, thank you. All right, have a good one.